Hello, everybody. This is Pat Walker, Mission Winners, doing a video overview of the ETFs. Why do we look at the ETFs? Here's a fact for you. Leading groups produce leading stocks, and leading stocks produce leading groups. By looking at the ETFs, we can see where there is strength, areas to potentially concentrate on as far as the ETF, or the stocks in that group, but it also helps us avoid lagging sectors and stocks. So here we go. Dow Jones Industrial Average is actually, you know, kind of trending up nicely here, okay? Please note this, and I'll shrink this just a bit so we can see more. Please note this. The Dow is only 30 stocks and it's price weighted, okay? So is it really relevant to the overall investing decision climate? No, not really, okay? So just want to put that in perspective. What it does tell us, though, is right here, the Dow is leading, okay? So what could you do there? Knowing that, you can maybe look at some Dow stocks. There we go. So let's continue onwards here. We're going to refresh this and well, here we go. And we are off. The next one, FV. This one focuses on max list stocks. Okay, I'm going to do a big crosshair thing here real quick. Bear with me. I like have a crosshair so I can see lines better. Dow Jones, oh, excuse me, First Trust Dorsey, right? It's again, it focuses on max list stocks. And it was trending nicely, but it hit some selling here, okay? Now, note this, it actually closed up a little bit on Friday. It would be nice to see this take out the highs here, which would also correspond with taking out the 21-day exponential moving average. That's the blue line. It would show so that maybe some strength is coming into the max list. Don't impose your will on it. Let price and volume tell you what to do. Continue on. Gold is lagging. There's nothing to do with gold miners. Okay, it fell on heavy volume. Till it gets back over the 200 day, we just have to leave it alone. That's simple. You can say, oh, let's look, let's look. No, if it's not there, it's not there. Don't, please don't impose your will on the stocks or the charts. Gold is a little bit stronger, but not great, okay? Has, you know, gapped up and dropped gap down here, runs up. You can see here, there is basing here, perhaps taking out these tops could be a potential buy. Right now, we're not in it. But there's a potential setup there on GLD. Not the best setup, but it's potential. By the way, this is also a great lesson for everybody. Note the open high low close on the bars. Like you see this bar right here? This is a very important investing fact. Remember this, just because it's a green bar doesn't mean it's a good bar. Just because it's a red bar doesn't mean it's a bad bar. Case in point right here. Oh, this is a green bar on good volume. Know where it opened, runs up and know where it closes. It closes below where it opened on a pickup in volume. It was met with selling pressure, not buying pressure. This is why we admission winners look at the bar charts. And it's not rocket science, it's just common sense. Closing near the lows of the day on a pickup in volume it was selling. That's it. Simplifies a good thing. Continue onwards. Biotechnology is trending nicely right here, as you can see. And what has it been saying for a while? Maybe you could look into some biotechnology stocks. It was talking back here too. There you go. It makes it easy and you can shrink the chart a little bit. I'll do that just so you can see a little bit more data. This works. This is also another important technique I wanna share with you. And this is what we teach. I used to teach this at the IBD meetups. Don't shrink the chart so much that you can't see the nuances in the chart, okay? Don't make it so big that you really can't see too much of the price action overall through time. And so right in this realm here is pretty good. Just wanted to share that with you. That'll help you. Oil is lagging, energy, leave it alone. Don't overthink it. Expand software technology has been lagging. It's met with selling pressure. This needs to show some power. Until it does, be careful with software. That simple. You can always see the name up here. Medicine's acting okay. Medicine is also a slightly de a defensive sector, okay? What does it tell us? Maybe look into some medical stocks. You can punch up IHI, IHI and see what their top 10 holdings are. Maybe there's some guidance there. Note this though, it did fall in fairly heavy volume three days ago, and it's rallied back up on less volume. Things to take in consideration. Mid-cap, not a lot of power at this point in time. This needs to bounce off the 21 EMA, that's the blue line, and do it with volume. There was some selling volume there and not a lot of buying power in this bar. Please note, I'm not being negative. I'm just reporting what is. That's all. That'll help you. Maintain objectivity. It will help you in your decision-making processes. Aerospace and defense is hanging in. Now look at this. Maybe this is going to bounce off the 21 EMA. Did fall on fairly heavy volume here, so it needs to get some power off of here. What's a stock in that group? Oh, Boeing is probably in there, right? There you go. Bounce off the 21 day. That's the blue line. 
that's exponential by the way, and do it on volume. And just to get everybody up to speed, the purple line is 200 simple. The green line is 50 day simple. The blue line is 21 day exponential. And the yellow line is eight period exponential. There you go. Um, home building construction, look at this base. Is this a thing of beauty? I mean, folks, clean and simple bases. And yeah, we bought here a couple of times and it's run up. We've sold some into strength. We're in good shape. I mean, that's what you look for. When we make our minds up, I say this constantly, when you make your mind up and say, this is what I'm gonna do and heck with everything else, life gets better, okay? Master a setup. It doesn't have to be this one, okay? Find one that fits you that is viable, okay? Don't just do some, you know, pattern, but it hardly ever works. This works. And you know why? Because everybody sees it, which increases the probabilities they will buy also. There you go. Isn't that what you want? So bouncing here off the 21 day doesn't look too bad. ITB. Now it's a bounce setup, not a base breakout. You buy more shares on a base breakout, you buy less shares on a pounce or a pullback setup. Good to remember. And it will need to lift off with volume and a good market. Just trying to educate and coach here. That's what we do. Um, S&P growth is lagging. Look, tells you to be careful with growth. There we go. That's good to know. Small cap's kind of lagging here. That needs to start straightening up. Tells you to be a little cautious. Real estate, still basing, still basing, but you know, not the best little base right in here in real estate. Okay, as you can see, and yeah, we're heavy in real estate, folks. Heavy. I think we own five or six real estate stocks right now. Home builders, etc. Transportation, still not a lot of power. Here's another lesson for you. Oh, that's a green bar pad on heavy volume. That's good. Look where it closed. It closed near the lows. It was met with selling. Just be cautious. Need to see some power. Regional banking's hanging in okay. There's a base right here. There you go. By the way, please don't think you have to get it to the penny. Just look at a lot of major intersecting points and stick with that. And remember this, this is for everybody. I used, I taught this for years. When it's approaching and pushing through the line, look for a volume pickup on lesser time frames. Look for a volume pickup on the hourly or the 30. And if it's early in the morning, maybe 10 minutes. I'd stay away from five minutes. I never look at five minute charts. That's just me. There's too much emotion in five minute choice charts. That's easy for me to say. Mid caps hanging in there okay. I like how this bounced right here on a pickup in volume. MDY, maybe something to watch next week, as are maybe some mid cap stocks. Continue on. Oil services lagging. Leave it alone. Do a compare and contrast. Well, it's kind of trending up, Pat. I ain't doing nothing. What does it tell you? In one second, stay away from oil services. It's done. Don't overthink it. It's done. A lot of selling in it. Just move on. Pharmaceuticals is acting decent. See this? Drugs. There you go. What could this, what could, does this tell you? Well, we could have bought some earlier in here, but also you could have looked into some pharmaceutical stocks. There you go. Not much to do with it now because it's extended, but it is acting good. You could look into some pharmaceutical stocks as I stated. QLD, QLD needs to bounce here. I've already got the alert set. You see this? I don't drop it in there. QLD, this is the NASDAQ 100. This needs to show some life, okay? It, you know, it rallied up here and it's been falling on fairly heavy volume. It needs a power lift here, okay? And what do I mean by that? I'll be very specific for everybody. It needs to lift up, take out these highs and do it on good volume. Until then, maintain a degree of caution. There we go. We don't impose our will on the stocks. QQQ, same situation. Retailing's acting decent. Nice trend there. Looking at some retailing stocks. Trending. Silver, nothing there. Look at the compare and contrast. Look at, well, that's kind of trending up, retailing. Oh, silver, that's doing nothing. It's just going sideways. That's choppy. What does it tell you? Stay away from silver stocks. None. Steel stocks have trended nicely. Pulling back here. Some distributions come into it, though, recently. See the red volume bars? This needs to lift off here. And do it with volume, okay, on SLX. Until then tells you to be careful. By the way, you could check into some steel stocks too. Continue onwards. Semiconductors, it's okay. A little sloppy here, okay? And note this, there was some heavy selling in here, folks. Heavy selling volume. Got to be careful. This needs to start lifting through the 21-day EMA. Until it does, I'd be careful with the ETF in groups. Spiders, S&P 500, support on the 21 EMA. The blue line needs to start showing a bounce here, okay? And note this, and I pointed this out to the team. Stock's been falling on fairly heavy volume, folks. That's institutional selling. 
Be careful with that. You'll need to see some up power. SSO, same situation. Now you can say, oh, this closed fairly good. It actually closed in the bottom half of its range on a pickup in volume. This met with some selling pressure. This needs to lift off. This is the 21 day exponential moving average, the blue line, lift off of here with volume. If it does, this could be a potential buy. And it also would tell you, hey, maybe the market is improving. Let price and volume guide you. It'll help you. Solar, there's nothing there. It's a it's a flare, flame out. Okay, I had to say it. I'm sorry. There's just nothing going on with it. Leave it alone. By the way, it's below the falling 200 day. Just leave it alone for now. Nothing to do with it. Small caps. There's some serious, you know, lift it up. But now there's some serious selling on there. A little loose here. But there is some strength overall, right? It was trending nicely. This needs to push through the 21 day with real volume and by up volume. By the way, that's serious selling there and that's serious selling there. Institutional selling in small caps. Be aware of it. Oils. Here's U.S. oil. What does this say to you? By the way, I read this decades ago in a book, and I think it's a cool idea. If you want to know the trend of a stock or an index, take a picture of it, print it out, tape it to the wall, go to the other side of the room and look at it. That's the trend. Sounds corny, but it works. There you go. Just make sure you use a tape that won't take the paint off the wall, okay? <laughs> Have a little fun too. Don't do that. I'm really serious though, because then you got to repaint that area. We don't want to do that, okay? VCR, consumer products, consumer discretionary. It's kind of hanging in there. Had a decent trend here. It's given a little back. back. It's kind of loose and choppy, okay? Needs to start showing some power. Till then, be uh, careful with consumer products. Aerospace and defense is the same thing. Needs to show some up power. Till it does, be careful with it. Biotechnology, another biotech ETF. And you see how you build a case? And you can say, oh, I see this and it's kind of hanging in. Here's another great lesson. I'm going to make this bigger for you. This is my thing at uh, one of my foundations and mission winners. I don't want to just give ideas. Anybody can give ideas. Then what happens if they quit? Okay, I'm not quitting. I love this. There's not, no, this is fun to me. This, there's nothing else I'd rather do besides this. This is it. Except maybe bike riding and climbing. Or, and skiing. Yeah, that's it. Parachuting years ago, but not anymore. Okay, so here we go. Right here, red bar. But look, it gaps down, it falls and closes near the highs. Folks, it's met with some, some buying pressure there. By the way, we have another biotech stock on the grid, 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 don't we? ITB that we talked about earlier. So you kind of build a case. They may be looking at some biotech stocks. Note this though, biotech stocks can be very risky. And I'm not kidding. One news story can lift a biotech stock. One news story can rip it apart. Know that, okay? Just, I'm not kidding. I've seen it. Home builders are hanging in. Look at this base. Is this beautiful? Clean and simple flat base. And yeah, we own some home building stock. I know we own at least four, maybe five. And it's working. And it's told us to buy it. There you go. Oh, by the way, let's go back to this. This is important. You look at it now. I'm not saying buy it here. The base, the breakout's here, okay? And an add-on here, but no buy here. It's pulling back on pickup and volume. Be cautious with that, okay? Materials, how do you build houses with materials? Notice this, pulling back on some volume and pulling back on some volume. You see how you connect the dots? It's not rocket science, it works. If, here, here you go, here's the analogy, car, they're not right now. Car stocks are doing great. Everybody, you know, the automobile stocks are just flying. They're going to town. Uh, gosh, if they are, chances are companies that make tires are also doing well. There you go. It's not fancy. It's simple. Simplify. Materials, there's some silly volume. Be careful with that. All right. Communications is basing, but not, not really great. Okay. Not a lot of power there. Be cautious with that. Energy. There you go. How's that look to you? I don't see anything. I see a lot of tail bars. I don't see any power in this thing yet. Just basing right now. Leave it alone. Energy stocks. Good. Financials have been doing okay. There you go. What does it tell you back here? Hey, maybe looking at some financial stocks. And it's still trending. Now, it's a little bit extended. It's got good price volume relationships. You could punch up XLF and find out what their top 10 holdings are. Maybe something in there could be an opportunity. That's what we do. Systematize. See that? It's a big word. Wow. Industrials are hanging in okay. All right. But there was some heavy selling on this bar. Just be careful with that. Need to bounce. Technology. And look at this. Look at the selling in this. What was it telling us? And the price and volume action on a lot of leading technology stocks was saying, hey, uh, A, don't buy me. B, you might want to sell me. 
or sell some. That's it. Let, let the chart price and volume tell you what to do. You don't have to forecast. It works. You get in line with it. Consumer staples, that's eh, just kind of going sideways, a little sloppy there, a little trending up there. Healthcare has been acting decent. Looking at some health, you know, it's been acting okay for a while. There you go. So maybe looking at some healthcare stuff. Consumer discretionary, this was trending nicely, but now look what it's done. And look at the selling volume. What does that tell you? There's a change of complexion in this group. Be cautious. There we go. Metals and mining has done well. And now look at this. It rallies up, pulls back to the rising 21 day. Some selling volume here and here. Perhaps this will bounce off the rising 20 one day with volume. And what else could you do? You could click on XME and find out their top 10 holdings or five holdings. See if there's anything else. You see, it's not that hard. It's not like, God, I'm doing all this stuff. No, you're really not. You're looking at this. Then you look at the leading stocks of the group and see if there's anything that looks good. There is. Starts to lift. Could be a buy. That that simple. Now, what else do you note, though? We always combine price and volume. Please note, it fell on fairly heavy volume here, and it fell on fairly heavy volume here. Also note this, and I'll draw this to help you. I used to teach this at the IBD meetups. When it was rallying up here, going up nicely, note, it was doing it on steadily decreasing volume. The power was diminishing, and then look what happened. Isn't that neat? Price and volume, they talk. Oil and gas, there's nothing there, leave it alone. Retailing's had a decent run. It's pulling back on fairly heavy volume. Needs to show some up power. Until it does, be careful with retailing. Software's had a good run. We've been involved with software. Pulls back on fairly heavy volume. Needs to show some power. Until it does, be cautious with software. Here we go. Apple. This is steadily falling. What does it tell you? And look at the selling volume. It says, be cautious. You know, don't buy it here. Wait for some power. Don't impose your will on it. It's like, oh, it's going to bounce off the 200 day. I don't know the future. Now, what could we see? If it takes out these highs here and it does it on volume, perhaps that could be a buy. But you've got to wait until it does. Continue onwards. Amazon. Now, Amazon looks a little better. Look at this. Falling down below the 50-day. Here's Amazon. Oh, support on the 50-day. Could this bounce off the 50-day? Possibly. What do you need to see? I'm going to give you some constraints, folks. You need to see a lift off the 50-day on a volume pickup going up. All right. Until it does, wait for it. You'll also want to see a good market. I already have price alerts set on it. Okay. But note, it fell. Notice how it's been falling here on steadily decreasing volume. Be cautious with that. Continue onwards. Alibaba, there's nothing there. Do a compare and contrast. Oh, this has been steadily uh, kind of trending up. This is just trending down. Leave it alone. There's not, don't, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Why play the maybe game? There's nothing there. Just leave it alone. That's simple. Baidu, chopping around here, possibly going across these tops right here. But what does it need to do? It's going to need really good volume. It's below the falling 200 day. Also note, oh, there's some green there. When it fell, it fell on a heavier volume than it went up on. Be cautious with it. Overall, be cautious. Google, I liked the tops, but then it's lost its luster. Really not a lot to do with it. And note, it fell on fairly heavy volume on Thursday. Just be cautious here. There's, there's not a lot of power. To, note this too. I'm not slamming these stocks. These will turn. Okay. The, it's Google. It, these are max list stocks. They will turn. When? I don't know. But you know what's the best part? Price and volume will tell us. And we'll be ready. There you go. Goldman Sachs. Now do a compare and contrast. There's not a lot of power there. What's this? There's really not a lot of power there. There's not a lot of power there. Okay. Oh, look at the difference. Goldman Sachs. That's basing nicely up here. By the way, I already have a price alert set. You see that little green mark? I'm going to set a little bit earlier too. We'll watch this and see. Here's a great lesson tactic for everybody that I've been using for years. Do not set your price alert at the pivot. Set it a bit early so that when it goes off, you can look at the chart and say, oh, look at that. Goldman Sachs is starting to go up here. Uh, man, it looks like it's getting close to that pivot. Look at it on lesser time frames. Look at it on the hour and third. Team, this is the real, this is real world stuff. This is in textbook, okay? This is living off the investing profits, okay? That was my life. And you look and you say, oh, there's volume coming into it. Volume, be very pragmatic. This is for everybody. Volume means other people see what we see, and they are acting. They are, in this instance, you're looking for them to buy. 
they are buying. It's measured by good price action backed by volume. No volume, no buy. That's simple. Volume is the fuel that lifts the ship off the pad. That's important to remember. Let's continue onwards here. Intel, looks like it started to go. Perhaps lift off these lines here. That's something to keep watching. Doesn't look too bad. Max list stock, but it's, by the way, oh, this is an ugly red bar. Look at how it closed, folks. Closed near the highs. So it needs to lift off the 21 EMA, that's the blue line, and do it with really good volume. By the way, you see I already have the price alert set? I'll drop it a little bit, just, just so if it starts to trigger, we can watch it and see if it starts to thrust through that pivot across this high on volume. Now, this is a pullback setup. This is not a simple base breakout. We own it. We bought it here and here. OK, and that was nice. But right here there, you know, it's a pullback setup. It's more aggressive. How do you control risk? If you buy, you buy less shares. It's that simple. Continue onward. MasterCard's kind of basing, but there's some selling in there. It's just kind of loose here. Not a lot of power. I'd be cautious with that. Meta. Look at the base breakout. I want to just share some lessons with you here. Excuse me. Look at look at the buys here. That's a wrong line here. But look at the base there. Look at the base here. Okay. That's what you look for. Base here. And this one dropped. And what do you do? You sell for a very small loss. We need to share this. Don't think everything works every time. Nothing buzz does. But here's the important part. Price is good above the line and bad below. It helps you keep losses smaller. So here's Meta now, or just a little while ago. Look at the base here and look at the good volume the day before. And then it followed through on average daily volume, but they were buying it on this bar. And that's a buy. There you go. Didn't get much from it, but we made money. We're still in good shape with it. It's bouncing off the 21 day. Maybe, maybe it will continue. By the way, you see my price alert? I'll drop it a little bit more. If, now this is aggressive. I'm not trying to talk you into anything. I'm just trying to show you what to look for. By the way, this works, okay? If it didn't work, you wouldn't be listening to me because I wouldn't be here because I would have lost the money, okay? So bouncing off the 21 day, the rising 21 day, very little overhead supply, and it did it on Friday on a pickup in volume. If it takes out the highs, which also pretty much corresponds, and I'll draw the line to help you. There you go. These tops, the high on this bar is 353.16. The high on this bar is 353.30. It's really close, folks. Take out this top with volume. Now, I'm going to take it a step further for you. If this had rallied up on a really large drop off in volume, I wouldn't be talking about it. But you can see the base right here. There's potential with that. That's something to watch. META, always run it tight. Always. This is not a long base breakout. It's a pullback setup. It's less reliable. This setup is less reliable than this setup. How do you control risk? You buy less shares. Good investing is not one size fits all. That's important to remember. We have been here for the long run. Microsoft, I like this base on Microsoft. I've drawn this line. What would I like to see? Well, there's some selling volume in here. As you can tell, I want to see this lift off the 50 day on a pickup in volume, take out the highs from a couple of days ago. See, I've already got the alert set. If it's got good market action, good price and volume action, this could be a starter by here. And then when it pushes through this line, you could add to it. There you go. There's your lesson right there. That, that helps. And again, I stress, am I saying it's going to do that? No, I'm just pointing out how to do it. Netflix is buy right here, rallies up, pulls back, basing right here. Perhaps this will take out these tops. By the way, you see I already have the price alert set? I'm ready. There was buyback here for it too. Look at the clean and simple base. Look at the trend up the ADMA. There you go. That's Netflix. NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been really good to us. And by the way, a lot of people say, oh, they have pet stocks. I don't have pet stocks. I key on stocks that can make me money. All right. Whatever it is. And I've had stocks that make, you know, you have two that have made you really good money at one time, but now they're nothing. They're not your pet stock. They're just nothing. There's not there. Why look at it? NVIDIA, I like this base. Now, this is why I look at weekly charts. This is the daily. And you can see, yeah, I can kind of see a little cup and handle right here. Here's the weekly. You go, oh, look at that base. Isn't that nice? I'm not trying to talk you into it. it needs to go across these tops. I will tell you this. As of this, uh, as of Friday, NVIDIA has an accumulation distribution of E. You can't get worse than that. This needs to lift up on really heavy volume. 
to show that institutions are flooding into it. No volume, no buy. And yes, I already have price alerts set. Look, and note, it's not at the pivot, it's early, so I can be ready for it. So that's something to watch on NVIDIA. And again, I stress, I'm not saying it's going to go, but I also want to just educate. And again, in a key point, oh, you look at the daily, that looks decent. But then you combine weekly. And on one of my templates, I have weekly and daily side by side. And I love it. It works for scanning. Let's continue. And the reason I do this is to help you. Things I wish somebody would have said to me. Let's continue onwards here. Tesla had a base right here, had a base right here. Starts to go on a pickup in volume. And we bought it. We bought it. It was on the key list. And a trigger runs up. Everything looks great. Gaps up, runs up, starts to reverse down, starts to drop. What do we do? We sold some. Kept dropping. We sold the rest for a very small loss. Very small loss. It was a loss. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't minimize that. I don't like losses. But this is why I love. This is a real world, real time deal. Price is good above the line and bad below. Daily chart. Lifts off on a volume pickup. Gaps up, runs up, starts to fall. Keep falling. And we sold it. We sold it for a small loss. And I'm glad we did because it's fallen dang near 20 points from where we sold it. But we've been out of, out of it up here. There you go. Just keen on the daily charts. Let's continue onwards. Here we go. Visa. I like this base right here. I already have price alerts set. I'm going to set a little bit earlier now that it's pulled back. Basing right here. By the way, there was a nice base right here too. Clean this base out. And again, this is a max list stack. And what's it going to need? I'm going to be very, very specific here for everybody. Is all of these are going to need good price action backed by good volume action, a volume pickup. And you can see it on lesser time frames. Stay away from five minute though. Again, I'll say it. And a good market. The M in mission winners, the market. You can say, what's mission stand for? Markets, industries, sectors, stocks institutional support, outstanding management, outstanding product, outstanding service. And the end in mission to me is the most important letter. This is a happenstance. This, this took a long time mindset for me to develop. N, never say never. Keep going. Keep going. Don't argue with the markets. Don't give up. Keep working at it. Keep working. It takes time, but it does come together. Always control risk. Always control ego. As soon as we think that, oh, we're hot stuff, is when you'll research. I'm a research hound, okay? That's my, my, my background through graduate school, et cetera. I used to do research for professors and things like this. Research indicates in the investing room, just share this with you. For most investors, their biggest losses occurred after a period of good success. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like. Maybe hit that subscribe button. We come up with new content nearly every day. Also, check out the videos on the right. YouTube recommends the one on the top, and the bottom one is something we thought you might enjoy. See you next time.